The 90s was a great time to be a child. With the advent of immersive interactive technology and gaming becoming more and more mainstream, there was always a never-ending pile of games inspiring children's imaginations and dreams. I believe as a kid, some of the games that I played were very formative, permitting me to see the world through a lens of compassion and empathy. Of particular note were a couple of games made by a small Japanese company called Quintet. Whilst I didn't manage to play all the games that Quintet made, as they all didn't make it to Australia, the two that I were able to get my hands on, that had a huge impact on me, and hold a place in my heart today, are Illusion of Time and Terranigma. But before I go on to look at those titles, I wanted to first examine a game that I didn't have the opportunity to play in my youth, Soul Blazer. Soul Blazer was first published in 1992 in both Japan and the US, and apparently later came to PAL territories in 1994, though I don't recall seeing it on the shelf at Video Easy. Appearing on the Super Nintendo, developed by Quintet, the game promised an action role-playing adventure that was a classic battle of good versus evil. We take on the role of an angel, who we'll refer to as Blazer, that has been sent from heaven to assist with cleaning up the world yet again. This game follows thematically on from Actraiser, so it's not difficult to see the similarities. Unlike other contemporary heroes, Blazer is able to communicate with the souls of every living creature, be they human, animal, or made from the remnants of a once great oak. Our hero is ill-equipped, placed into a small room where he procures a blade that he must use to defend himself, which releases a spirit that then floats around him for the rest of the game. Once completing this room, we are permitted to enter the first location, a land carved into the side of a mountain with nothing but the trickle of a stream and the breath of an icy wind to keep him company. You see, prior to the events of the game, a greedy man by name of King Magrid decided that he wasn't rich enough, so forced the cooperation of a scientist to create a portal to another world. This in turn enabled the king to forge a pact with a demon known as Death Toll, who promised one gold coin per soul submitted to him. Of course, as humans are wont to do, the king agreed without any forethought, and thus the world is now in its current state, an empty and soulless shell. As far as the story goes, it is basic and you won't be playing the game to enjoy it. Whilst the story itself didn't give me goosebumps, I did enjoy the reoccurring themes that kept popping up such as the belief in reincarnation and that the progress of evolution will inevitably lead to the demise of a nation through the fallacy of human nature, greed and desire, which also permeates our own world. I enjoyed that the game examined some of these themes and used them to promote a message of hope to the player. The fact that the world started in a state of disarray, as opposed to the typical plot of stop the powerful being before he destroys the world, was refreshing. I also liked how the hero could talk not only to humans, but also animals and plants, showing that every living creature has a soul and feelings, which upped the stakes as you were fighting to restore all life on the planet, rather than battling to save just the lives of beings we, as humans, are able to comprehend and relate to directly. As Blazer, it is our job to venture into the perilous areas of the world, seeking out and dispatching monster lairs to rescue the soul of whatever creature has been captured within. Thematically, this action is very similar to Actraiser, where the humans would clear out monster lairs when directed. This time, however, humans do not have the power to accomplish this task, so it falls upon us. Each monster lair houses monsters that must be slain which will then release the soul that was held in captivity. When a monster lair is dispatched, no more monsters will come out of it, which made it easy to keep track of where you have been within a dungeon, and made the slogs through these dangerous areas much easier to coordinate, not having to worry about redefeating the enemies that you had already taken out. Enemies that are not related to the monster lairs also exist, but they typically never pose much of a threat and were a good source of extra experience if you were looking to level up. I enjoyed this system as there were always continual gains and progress to each of the towns, or immediate effects within the local environment for each monster lair that you dispatched. For example, one lair could free a goat, or a lonely tulip, where another would free a person which would not only restore that soul, but also the house that they once lived in. You know, now that I think about it, it's not difficult to see that Dark Cloud drew inspiration from this game, 
and I really wish that more developers would follow suit. At the end of each dungeon there is a boss battle where you will need to put all your skills to the test to survive. Some of these were challenging, but nothing that couldn't be overcome with a little planning, leveling, and perseverance. As you release souls, you can return to the main hub of each area to explore and talk to the natives. There are six towns or areas in total, each with a different theme and tone. You begin in Grass Valley, where a girl named Lisa once lived. Her father is Dr. Leo, the scientist that was forced into helping King Magrid with his mad ambition. Amidst the lazy village, you'll find herds of goats, talkative flowers, and vines of ivy that assist you to scale the great cliffs. Greenwood is a glade sitting amidst a heavily forested area. It is a sanctuary for animals where you'll find moles tunneling their way beneath the roots of large trees and a variety of fauna that make their home beneath the canopy of ancient oaks. St. Ellis Seabed is the land of mermaids and dolphins, an aquatic haven beneath the ebb and flow of the ocean, where our hero will need a special armour to breathe. The Mountain of Souls is a cavernous labyrinth of corridors belonging to gastropods and small people who have the lifespan of a year. Our hero will need to climb ice-capped peaks to rescue the king of the short-lived people. Dr. Leo's laboratory houses domesticated animals among tools made from wood that retain their sentience. One of Lisa's dolls holds the key to completing a puzzle that will help Blazer to complete his mission. Finally, there is Magrid Castle, the home of King Magrid and his soldiers and maids that probably don't really deserve saving, but Blazer does not discriminate. Amidst all the locations, my favourite was St. Ella's Seabed for the diversity of dungeon locations present within the ocean. One island is lashed by rain, whilst another is pelted with rocks of magma from an angry volcano. I also enjoyed exploring beneath the waves, safe within a bubble of air. Unfortunately for Blazer, he does not have a great moveset when it comes to tackling enemies, however his small arsenal is more than enough to take out any of the foes that he encounters. His trusty blade can be slashed in a wide arc, which not only hits enemies that stand before him, but also to the side and sometimes behind. If he wants a more focused attack, he can steadily hold his blade before him, decimating the health bar of anything gullible enough to stand in his way. The orb that floats around him can be used to cast a variety of magic powered by gems. Gems are collected as drops from enemies and can be drawn to him by holding out his blade by pressing the R button. There is a large variety of magic that can be found, but it can be a little difficult to aim as the spell will be slung from the spirit rather than Blazer himself, so positioning is key, though almost all of the bosses are immune to the effects of magic, so I really didn't tend to use it all that much. Movement is also quite limited, as Blazer can only move in four directions, and always at the same speed. I would have appreciated the ability to run, especially when some of the dungeon gimmicks expected you to walk against the floor of a conveyor belt, or across heated tiles that would burn the delicate soles of Blazer's angelic feet if they were stepped upon for too long. As Blazer makes his way across the various biomes of the world, he will find or be gifted items that can assist his exploration of the dungeons. In addition to weapons, armor, and spells that all have varying effects, Blazer can also equip an item or accessory, such as medicinal herbs that will replenish all of his health if he dies, or rings that double his attack power or reduce incoming damage, just to name a few. Unfortunately, only one accessory or item can be equipped at a time, so it did sometimes become cumbersome having to open the menu to change these when trying to navigate difficult terrain, or to prevent Blazer from dying due to having an enemy's flappy limbs connect with his face one too many times. The graphics are functional for a game of this type and time, and there isn't much else more to say about it. I did enjoy that there was an animated overworld map from which you could select each area you wanted to travel to that changed based on whether or not you had beaten the boss in each individual area. The animations for the hero were minimal, though the bigger enemies did look spectacular and intimidating compared to the size of Blazer. I feel like Soul Blazer was used as a title to hone Quintet's artist's skills, as there are marginal improvements in graphics from this game through to Terranigma, which came out toward the end of the SNES's life cycle. Oh, I do want to mention that I did enjoy the animated picture of Lisa at the end of the game. It was just chef's kiss and a nice touch. You may be interested to know that the game's soundtrack was composed by Yukihide Takekawa, the vocalist of the band Godiego. He isn't a heavy hitter when it comes to game soundtracks, with only a small selection of credits which includes Soul Blazer. However, I did enjoy that he stepped outside of his normal sphere of musical work to try something new. 
I felt like the music fit in well and some of the themes bore a striking similarity to those found within Actraiser, so it made me wonder if he did his research before composing for this project. My favourite track is called Solitary Island, which plays in some of the dungeon areas of St. Ellis Seabed. I like how the track builds up in a frenzied crescendo, which really suited the dangerous environment the Blazer was treading. Some of the sound effects in the game were ripped directly from Actraiser, such as the manly grunt of pain, or pleasure, whenever Blazer gets struck by the enemy, as well as the sound of something exploding. This didn't really bother me though, as the exploding sound also features in Illusion of Time, and it kind of made me feel a little nostalgic for that game, so it also made me a little excited knowing that I will be moving on to that game in the future. For a game that came out in the early stages of the Super Nintendo's life cycle, Soul Blazer is a game that should definitely be explored if you have not had the opportunity to pick it up. Whilst the game may have a bare bones story, the themes of reincarnation and evolution will keep you thinking about the game well after you've put the controller down. A basic combat and exploration loop sits amidst a strong town rebuilding system that will put a smile on anyone's face through its addictive nature in wanting to push through a dungeon to restore just one more soul. If you have not played Soul Blazer, I would recommend that you pick it up when you get a chance, though be warned that you may not be able to put it down. One minute you're looking at the clock and it's 6pm, and the next it's 1am in the morning. It'll really draw you in. By the way, are there any classic games that you remember fondly and would like to recommend to me and see me cover? Let me know in the comments. This has been Venoir with a review of Soul Blazer for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. If you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe for more great action RPG content. As always, thanks for watching all the way through to the end. Take care of yourselves, and bye bye. Bye for now.